that. All right. I think we can get started um, with some of the questions that we have here today. Um, Will is actually um, still speaking uh, because he has a lot of great things to say. So I get to be your host um, today and ask you questions. So, all right, let's get started. Um, there's some, and uh, I wanna just let everybody know um, who's in the audience. Um, you're welcome to turn on your cameras. You're welcome to unmute yourselves to ask questions. If you do have questions, please just raise your hand um, and I'll be happy to um, to actually uh, call you up and, and you can un, uh, take, turn off your um, your camera and, and ask um, Florian some questions interesting questions. Um, so Florian, before we even get started, do you want to introduce yourself and, and what you do? Yeah, happy to. Uh, thanks for thanks for having me here as well. Um, I am uh, the head of product for the Ride Experience, uh, working at Tier Mobility. Um, you might be familiar with the service. It's a scooter and e-bike rental service. Um, we're in, uh, I guess, like 300 cities, probably a bit more. Um, and uh, a lot of markets, and I am working with uh, a couple of teams that are uh, responsible for the main, uh, let's say, rental experience uh, within the app, within our consumer app, iOS and Android. Fantastic. And so, what? So, one of the first question that we have here is, you know, when you think about micro mobility, could you kind of explain what that is? Um, first off, and, and, and why that's important for the world today? Yeah, I, uh, I hope so. <laughs> so <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I guess it, it all started out with uh, the idea of, um, of this whole last mile travel, right? Um, there is already, um, so I guess like everybody um, in the world uh, has mobility needs, right? We all need to get from A to B, um, depending uh, where you live, that might be further or, um, or not so far. Um, however, the, the, like the whole micromobility idea is to basically provide the service or like to give you the vehicles uh, that you need uh, at, your, um, uh, at your service, basically. So you can like wherever you need to go, uh, especially uh, we're fo focusing on cities uh, from uh, A to B, basically. Uh, and uh, yeah, and combine it also with other modes of transport if you're like, for example, uh, I don't know, our public transport uh, person, then, you know, hopefully there is uh, uh, some vehicle, for us, it's mainly scooters and e-bikes e at the moment, uh, at the station, and then you can use it just to go like wherever you need to go and uh, have like a more end-to-end uh, -end, uh, travel experience as well. Hey, Florian, this is Will. I'm just joining uh, a little late uh, because the keynote ran over, but thanks so much for being here. I'm uh, just uh, catching up with the conversation. We have a good group of people here, 30 participants. Thanks, everybody, for joining the breakout. And um, really great that you're, uh, that uh, Florian is here joining us to speak about uh, amazing experiences you're building with Tier. I, for one, have loved, I've sort of fallen in love with the product. I uh, recently moved to Helsinki and uh, Unfortunately, uh, the service is closed for the winter now because we got our first snowfall in Helsinki, but I was enjoying it all summer. It's a great product. So thanks for putting it together and, and driving it forward. Pleasure. Cool, yeah, nice uh, that you're here. We already started without you. Hope that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's, I encourage that for sure. I'm curious if you talked about it already, but you know, one of the things that's that I think about a lot is the importance of map design uh, in, you know, we sort of also touched on it a little bit during the keynote with one soil, you know, thinking about that farmer in the field, tough conditions, complex data, how do you simplify that? How do you, how do you design a user experience that, that works, it's simple and it's clear in, in a tough environment? I mean, it's similar to being, you know, in Helsinki in the in the cold weather, and I'm trying to unlock my scooter, and it's raining. Uh, you know, how do you think about designing uh, an interface and using maps to to build an interface that's resilient to that kind of uh, experience? Yeah, very good question. I mean, maybe to uh, to uh, uh, kick it off, like with a with a map, it is for us like a very central part of our application, right? Because we Basically, we have a lot of information we need to convey to our users, 
And we need to find a good balance in terms of what do they need to know and what do we need them to understand? Um, and then uh, how can they interact with it, right? So basically, if you are a registered user and you open our, our app, the first or the main screen is the app because we need to give you orientation in terms of where you are in the city and also obviously like where to your location is the next kind of vehicle, scooter you yeah. could jump on or, or bike you could rent, right? This is like a very kind of, that's the most basic thing that, that we need to be able to provide. Um, and then obviously we have like a couple of um, additional, uh, I don't want to call it necessarily restrictions, like, uh, like regulations or rules yeah. or something that we need to um, uh, also kind of uh, communicate to the users. If you think about uh, the business area for people to understand where can I actually go uh, if I if I rent a vehicle, uh, then we have yeah obviously like some areas where there's no parking allowed, so you cannot just put your put your scooter there. Um, and so it's a yeah it's a very very fine fine balance between like having everything on basically for us it's on the map right um, as an entry point to to most of these interactions, uh, and then also not overwhelming uh, people. Uh, so for example, right, like we could, uh, like configure the map to have show like all sorts of things, mm -hmm. but which are the relevant ones. And I think we have like pretty good, um, uh, flexibility in that, uh, in order to really kind of distill the information, uh, users need. Mm -hmm. So it's about simplifying the experience showing, I mean, it's a lot of information, uh, to communicate quickly. Uh, but going back to the first thing you mentioned was performance. I, I imagine that being able to get going, uh, open the app quickly, find a vehicle quickly, that's pretty essential. Like if I'm deciding whether I just walk or take the Metro or, or use some other mode of transportation, if I can get a scooter fast or get a bike fast, like I'm probably more likely to take it. Have you found, observed any changes in terms of performance? I mean, uh, yeah, for sure. First of all, yeah, sure. Performance is like no one waits for an app to open and for to load the content, you know, like we like no one likes that. Um, and there's like yeah, a high churn risk, let's say, if you if you have to wait for too long, especially like if you're in a hurry or if the weather conditions are really bad and you need to, you need to go somewhere. Um, so this is obviously like very, very important. And then uh, I think for us, we um, to maybe describe the challenge that we obviously have is um, we have a lot of custom content that we need to have on the map, right? Uh, like all the different kind of zones that are there, uh, all the different vehicles that we have, and, and we need to render all of them. And just to get to, to put that into perspective, um, if you're in a smaller city, like having a proper parking mode, maybe that's not so critical. If we are in Berlin, um, we have uh, a couple of thousand zones we need to render in a certain area. We have like a growing fleet size, you know, like we are happy that we can put more vehicles uh, in the streets and that they at the um, hands of the, in the hands of the customers. Uh, at the same time, yeah, we need to render them and they need to load. And, uh, you know, you still want a very, very fluent experience in terms of uh, panning, zooming, like whatever you're doing. And also this is like what, what our users do, right? Like they, they pull up the app, they kind of move around, they see, they zoom out, like, where do I want to go? Is this inside the business area? Like all these kind of things. So getting everything ready so they can interact with it is kind of the first thing. And then how fluent uh, is everything? Um, that is kind of, these are the main challenges. And I think, so we have obviously like been, been trying out a couple of different map operators and this became uh, not in all cities, obviously, there's a very specific uh, kind of uh, kind of scenarios that we're talking here, where we really reach the limits uh, when it comes to performance. And we thought like, okay, from a from a user experience, that's not acceptable anymore. Like there's a like kind of a quality quality gap or quality loss. Um, and then yeah, and then we we tried Mapbox, you know, and resolved a lot of these um, a lot of these issues. Uh, so um, yeah, really happy about that, obviously. And um, yeah, and also kind of now, I think we're only at the beginning to explore. And I mean, we're in the discussion, right? Like to explore what other opportunities we have and where we can kind of kind of take that even further. Yeah, so it sort of seems like performance is table stakes. Like you need to be able to open the app and, and explore and see the vast 
inventory of vehicles. It gives the user, I imagine it gives the user a lot of confidence to say, okay, tier, I'm going to be able to get to my destination. And then there's going to be ample inventory to get home. And I can trust this platform with all these vehicles. Um, so the table stakes is that performance. And then there's that iteration capability. The fast, the faster you can test and experiment with something new, maybe in studio, you can play with a design tweak or you can experiment with another tool. Um, I, that makes a lot of sense. I'm curious in terms of numbers, uh, don't wanna put you on the spot, but do you think, is there anything that could quantify the before and after in terms of the performance change or performance improvement? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, loading times, you know, like we're talking about milliseconds that still make kind of a feeling like, or like a difference in the, in the perception. I think one that stood out pretty well is if you, like when it comes to the smoothness of, you know, interacting with the map, um, this is something that you can measure with dropped frames per second, right? So, um, that kind of determines like when you move the map, like how many, like in this kind of moving the map, how many kind of images do you actually show or how many frames do you show, right? Um, and we definitely uh, kind of easily doubled uh, the number of frames. I think we might've even quadrupled them, um, which of course led to from a very, very laggy movement of the app mm -hmm. um, to a super smooth one, right? And I think this is also where it comes to, uh, you could like, if we were, you know, like five years back or let's say 10 years back, you would have been okay with like, oh yeah, you know, we load a lot of content from the internet, you know, uh, right. and then it, that can just happen. Right now, it's just not, you know, it's nothing like anyone maybe would celebrate you for or something. Oh, they, you know, you can move like smoothly interact with the map. It's just expected. So we have yeah. to deliver that. And yeah. uh, this is just like the, the opportunity we had here. So um, yeah, really happy about that. And it really, it really shows, right? Like, like you can, you can try that out. I think, yeah, at some point, like when we, when we've been, when we've been talking, I, I, uh, I still have a phone, like a, like a test phone where I run an older version of our oh, app yeah. <laughs> uh, with a different map, you know, and you just like, you play around with, you get so used to everything being fluent and fast, you know, that yeah. uh, you, it's very easy to forget like how it was. And then you pull out like this old version and you're like, what the hell were we doing? <laughs> That's so, cool. Yeah, yeah. You're, you have to hold on to that phone. Uh, you have to make sure it doesn't auto update or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Florin, a couple a couple minutes left. I'm I'm curious what is what's next uh, for Tier, you know, and and what is sort of the vision, uh, you know, no spoilers, but um, what are, what are you most excited about, and and uh, especially from a location perspective, what are you most excited about for for the company? As, I mean, uh, as, you, as you already kind of kind of mentioned, right? We now have the have the tools as well to be to be like re relatively fast in experimenting, right? I'm thinking a lot, you know. Like I always have to have to align with our designers, obviously. But I'm very um, enthusiastic about like different different map styles we could we could try and test with users, you know, um, to make it uh, maybe even more accessible. Uh, that's for sure like what, one thing where we like with Mapbox Studio, we can experiment um, uh, quickly and try things out. Um, that is that is great. But then there's also other capabilities. Uh, for example, we have like um, we have a navigation in select cities, right, that we have been setting up a while back. And we are kind of also to see can can this gain traction? And there's obviously like different elements of navigation, like finding your way to a vehicle, taking yeah. the vehicle somewhere. And then there's a lot of information that is pretty relevant and it's also unique to our service then, right? Like if you use regular navigation, let's say, you wouldn't care about like a battery level of the vehicle you're, sure. you're driving with or something like this. Uh, that's why we like, we would love to pull in like navigation more. So I think this is definitely something that we, that we will um, uh, try to further look at um, because we do see a huge value for, for our customers. Also, maybe we have like, you know, we have different parking models as well. So we have cities where um, uh, you have parking zones where it's mandatory to go there, right? Yeah. So um, it's important for you or as a user to find those, right? And that's maybe a bit tougher. So what our current navigation, well, already does, um, but uh, there's always room for improvement, obviously, um, is to guide you to that next parking spot, right? Like to show you, 
different uh, different angles to what like your movement needs. Uh, so this this is for sure something that is a bit has been a bit neglected, um, but that's definitely something that we will uh, further look into. Yeah, and also obviously like this is very very closely connected to the app, of course. And um, yeah, yeah, really cool that idea of end to end navigation. You know, sort of guide me to the nearest vehicle. Maybe it's a different vehicle based on the length of the journey. Maybe I want to be sitting on a bike for a long journey or standing on a scooter for a shorter one. But guiding to the vehicle and then guiding me to parking based on my final destination is a really cool feature. And also, you know, avoiding the, the cobblestone streets in Helsinki. I always find myself riding the scooter on the cobblestones and it shaking, shaking my, my, my hands a lot. Um, Florian, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, apologies for uh, starting a little on the later side, uh, but I really appreciate your, uh, you sharing the, the experience building with Mapbox, but also the vision for the future. Very excited about the next steps. Um, as I said, I, I'm a big fan of the scooters. I also want to thank the participants who are joining today. We're going to go back to the lobby and uh, pick on a, pick out a next uh, breakout session. Thanks again. Thanks. See you.